Hello and welcome. Today we're talking about how to live with a messy partner and not snatch your wig off because that would be an accomplishment, right? <laughs> so I'll be going over three strategies that you can use to make this a reality for yourself and you know everyone else in the house. I know it's very stressful or it can be. And um, after I go over these strategies, I'll give you a bonus that you can use to really bring it all home so to speak and make some good decisions regarding how you're going to deal with the situation moving forward and do it in a way that's just very healthy positive and like i said we'll bring you the the peace that you need right now <laughs> all right so if you've never met me before i'm victoria alexander i'm the face behind the clean care and i help super stressed out women and men that are dealing with crazy chaotic messy homes and lives find the confidence that they need to really make the choices and take the action to completely change that around and create the homes and lives of their dream. So if you could use more of that in your life, I definitely invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as like the video. With that, let's go ahead and dive into it. I've got my notes here, so if you see me looking down, well, I'm reading. So how to live with a messy partner strategy i was about to say tip strategy number one it is to you need to reframe how you view your partner and you need to <laughs> this is actually kind of funny i have to practice this what does your partner do that you love okay that's a question that you need to ask yourself because i'm sure as you're looking around you're seeing this mess you're blaming them you're hating them those um, sparks are definitely not there. Butterflies, not there. You know, you're more so thinking about A-Town stomping this person, right? So what is it though that you like about them? What are some of the good things about them? Before you actually want to address the whole situation, it's a lot better for you to think of them as a, you know, a positive, productive member of society that's respectable so that you approach them as such instead of approaching them as though they are the absolute scum of the universe, right? If you're approaching them thinking that they are <laughs> the scum of the universe, your conversation, you guys aren't gonna get very far. You're gonna say some real nasty things. You're gonna have your nasty little attitude. It's just gonna be a clash of the titans here and nothing's gonna get worked on, okay? Um, but if you come to them in a sense of, you know, this is a person you actually respect. I really appreciate, you know, you and we just need to work on some things here. Can you hear me out for a moment or whatever? You're going to get a way different response. OK, so that is strategy number one. Just think about this. Approach them as a person that you love and respect, not a person that you hate. All right. So. Let's move on to the next one. How to live with a messy partner, strategy number two. Things will never be equal, but they should definitely, definitely be fair. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. Things will never be equal, but they should definitely be fair. I know I hear a lot of people saying, you know, relationships are never, um, you know, 50-50 and all this stuff. And I'm a girl that just... Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but no, something's still off about this, right? So it's kind of like, all right, if I'm doing 90% over here in the house and you're doing 10%, well, your 10% better be like a heck of a 10%, right? I don't know what that 10% is that you're doing, but it better be something big, right? That we can feel um, because otherwise that's imbalance. And for me, it's not fair, all right? So I'm all about fairness. Um, Another something that comes to mind when I think about this is partnership. So for me, a relationship is more so a partnership. I'm looking for a partner in life, right? So, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, work-wise, you know, whatever I'm aspiring to be, how I keep my home, where I live, all those things. I want someone that is not going to necessarily take away from any of that, but in a sense can help me to expand all of that or elevate it in some sort of way, right? So the same goes for my environment at home. When you have a family, a house, some people don't necessarily like to think of it as a job, but it is a job and it's actually like a, a job within many jobs, right? Um, so everything from like the same way someone has to run a restaurant, right? There's waitresses, hostess, uh, cooks, 
someone just to dice up vegetables, someone to fry the french fries, someone to actually make the menu, someone to print it. Your house, your home is the same. And in order for that to run efficiently, two people need to, to really bring 100% to the table. That's really what it is, right? There is no 50-50, like they say. There is no 90-10 both of us need to be bringing 100%. Whatever needs to be done needs to be done type thing. That's just me. You know, I know I'm a little ruthless. I'm a certain kind of girl. Not always popular, but that's, again, I'm just a random person on the internet giving my opinion. So let's say that you work full time and your partner uh, stays at home. When you come home from work, that's not necessarily the time for you to take off your shoes and chill, right? Because your partner's also been up just as long as you have, and they're technically still at work, right? Just because the other person stays at home, that does not negate the fact that they are still very much at work, all right? They may not be getting paid for it or have a name tag, but that's a job too. So when that other person comes home, is it fair that now they can... They did a nine to five, so now they can come home and they can sit down, pop their feet up while the other person, well, they've been up since, you know, um, seven and they haven't had a break yet, you know, and they know their day's not going to end until nine o'clock at night when the kids go to bed. For me, that's an example of where it's not fair, right? Um, so when the other person comes home, you jump into the chaos or you jump into the mess that's going on, that person, you know, that just came home. I don't know if I said that backwards, but essentially, hey, if you're in the kitchen cooking that other person, they need to go ahead upstairs and start the bath water to go ahead and start getting the kids, you know, um, taken care of and all that good stuff so that we can all chill together, you know, at nine o'clock or even earlier since we're all working together. OK, so that's partnership. And that's also just to look at how sure I may do a whole lot over here. And you may only do that 10, but that 10 better be something, okay? Fairness. When you're approaching the other person, keep that in mind. So if you are the person that is um, the messy one in the situation, you know, look at it that way, right? Partnership, that is your partner. Um, and if you're the person that's trying to, you know, reel a messy person in, again, have that conversation from the perspective of, hey, you know, things may not be equal, but this is more so what's fair, all right? And if they don't believe in, you know, um, what you're talking about, if you sing words like, hey, let's do what's fair, let's do what's right, that is, you know, repulsive to them. Well, to me, that is where we start digging into deeper issues like, should you be a person that I should even be entertaining? You know, because I like to deal with people that want to be fair and kind and all that. But again, that's just me. I can be ruthless. <laughs> all right. So let's go ahead to the next one. Strategy number three. It is don't be a dictator. Be a negotiator. All right. Strategy number three, how to live with a messy person. Don't be a dictator. Be a negotiator. If you can find a way for everyone to win, you will unlock the keys to the universe literally the stars are yours all right um your partner is not going to stop being messy just because you said whatever you said and you came with the biggest attitude in the world I like, nope they're not scared of you all right <laughs> it's going to take more than that so if you approach them with you know the the two previous tips that we went over and you you give them permission to be messy, so to speak, but you also put boundaries in place so that they know, okay, yes, you can be messy, but you can't be messy over here. You know what I'm saying? Like you, I'm sorry, somebody was like driving very slowly by my house, looking out the window. Who is that? Yikes. Stalker. Um, anyways, you can be messy here, but you can't be messy over there. And the way you want to do that is Sometimes just because you don't like someone doing something, it doesn't mean that they're doing something wrong. So by that, I mean your partner having uh, the their clothes in their dressers or their drawers all, you know, um, funky and, and just wrinkled and thrown in there and yada yada. Yeah, you may not like to see it for whatever reason, but they're not doing anything to you. Okay, if that makes sense. 
Um, however, if their stuff is thrown about in common areas, right, now then, yes, that does affect you. That affects everyone else in the house. So I kind of lead with that whole live and let live. Live and let live. Yeah, I think that's how it goes. But basically, you know, be free to be yourself. However, your freedom to be, you should not infringe upon me being me, right? You should not be injuring me, damaging me, bothering me in any capacity. It's even the same as like music, right? You can listen to your music all day long as loud as you want, as long as it doesn't bother me. You know, put your headphones on so you can listen to your music however you want to. And we can now operate within that same space. When, when you get your music, I still get peace and quiet. All right. So don't be a dictator, be a negotiator. So what does this look like when we're talking about messiness? To me, what comes to mind is um, drop zones, right? So back to the example of the person that likes to come in and, and their stuff is just really everywhere. You can really say, hey, I've got this table here by the door. When you come in, you can drop all your stuff there, right? Um, but the rest of these counters in here, the rest of this furniture in here, those are no fly zones, right? Like that is not where your stuff needs to go. I like to, you know, just keep everything clean and decorated and, you know, ready for photos whenever. So you're not going to mess up my whole vibe here. So this table though is yours. It can be as sloppy, as nasty, as messy as you want it to be. Now, with that being said, I'm sure some of you have probably tried something like this before and you're like, well, it doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work if you don't have consequences, right? In a no-fly zone, like if we're at war with somebody and there's a no-fly zone, what happens when you fly into the no-fly zone? You get shot down, okay? You're done. Finito. We'll give you one warning shot, you know, give you a chance to turn around and then if you're still there, you're there. So when it comes to the clutter, if someone's in the no-fly zone, you might say, hey, um, this is your drop zone. This is the safe zone. You can put your stuff there, leave it there as long as you want. But if you are in a no-fly zone, no-fly zones work like this. At nine o'clock every night, I go through and whatever's in the no-fly zone that does not belong there gets boxed up, bagged up, and put on the side of the road. That's just it. That's just the, that just is what it is. There's no conversations anymore. There's no talking about it. There's, and now some of you guys are talking way too much. Like, no, you just need a consequence and you need to be consistent about enforcing it. Like that's literally it. You're spending way too much time talking and going back and forth with people, all right? Um, and that's draining, that's adding to the frustration, the stress of this, this whole messy situation. <laughs> so, you know, take heed of that guys, all right? Consequences. Um, all right, so let's go back over these three tips, top to bottom, and let me adjust this real quick. All right, so how to live with a messy partner and not think that you made the biggest mistake in the entire world. Strategy number one is speak to them as if they're someone that you love. <laughs> Strategy number two, remember that things will never be equal, but they should definitely be fair. You should fight for fairness, okay? And then strategy number three, don't be a dictator, be a negotiator. Let me adjust this one too. All right, so now let's move into that bonus tip real quick for you guys, and then I will let you go, which is, hold on, I lost it, I lost it. All right, so sometimes sometimes there are bigger issues going on than just your partner's you know clutter or mess or whatever that you see laying around right sometimes i don't know when i read the emails and stuff that you guys are sending me i just kind of feel like some of you are dating and married to some real a-holes And I just don't know how far you're going to get uh, based on what you're telling me. Like, yeah, you're talking to me about, you know, coming home and dishes piled up and all this other stuff. But within the email, based on the other things you shared, I mean, you guys got some bigger things that you need to work on. So I guess I want to just really quickly mention compatibility and um, and and 
compatibility and just having the wisdom to know, hey, you know what? There, we got some deeper things going on here that we need to work on. And once we work out those issues, then then we will be able to work on this laundry issue that we're having or, you know, who's vacuuming. You know, those are little problems in the grand scheme of things compared to some of the issues that you guys are dealing with at home. So I guess I just want you to ask yourself some questions as you're... Uh, marinating on how to approach you know the the partner that you have in your life and I want you to ask yourself um, does that person let me rewind what was their upbringing like you know what were they like before they got involved with you let's say that person was super clean before you but now with you you know the place is, is a mess and all this other kind of stuff right that could really indicate that they're depressed about something or just things are going on in their life right that speak to some level of unhappiness that maybe they haven't shared um, or the same could be going on inside of you right maybe you're depressed about something or feel a loss somewhere or you know, um, just unhappy with, with things, yet they've manifested or presented themselves in your life as a messy house or not being necessarily um, the best partner, right? Um, another thing you'll want to ask yourself is, does the person that you're dealing with, do they care about you as a person? You know, if you go to them and tell them, hey, this something really, really bothers me, I really want to talk to you about it, um, you know, are they attentive to that? Like, do they care? Uh, just what what kind of vibes are you getting right because some of you are talking to people that really I don't think they really care that much about you you know for real for real. they're kind of I don't know I don't know maybe you were like the option that they chose but you weren't the one they really wanted you know those types of vibes or feelings and sometimes those things are hard to accept but um <laughs> Hold on. And I don't want to sound like a bitter person or anything like that. I'm just extremely passionate on people being or I'm extremely passionate about people being with the right people for them um, in relationships. Just because I've seen so many people with very bright futures and destinies ahead of them that all of a sudden, you know, get with the wrong person that everyone can clearly see is not a person they should even be with. And things just come tumbling down in the most surprising ways, right? Even including, you know, your home, you know, your home falling apart or being filled with chaos and things like that. So no, I'm not bitter at all. I'm just very passionate about all of us living a purpose-filled life and, and being what God created us all to be, which is excellent and amazing. Um, I just don't think that we should settle for less than that. So sometimes you have to make hard decisions. Um, we may be talking about, you know, who's going to take out the trash, but sometimes that relationship might be what needs to be taken out. Um, anyways, do you and your partner possibly have issues that maybe, um, you just haven't sat down to really talk about at this point. So now little things are becoming big things when there was once upon a time, a really big thing that maybe you guys swept under the rug. And so now things are just kind of snowballing and we kind of just need to pause and like I said, really address, you know, whatever that big thing was that we ignored from so long ago. So, you know. Is there something else that you find your mind drifting to that maybe you really want to talk to them about? Could there be something that they want to talk to you about? There's some animosity, some type of resentment over some decision that was made, some financial um, choices. Maybe that someone didn't agree with and maybe had a really bad impact on something. Just what? It could be anything. Are you in love with someone else? You know, is that why you've been acting the way you're acting um, or them? You know, like it, it could be anything. Life is crazy super crazy um lastly you know you do want to also ask yourself it's like i said it's compatible a compatibility issue so you know when you guys were dating or getting to know each other you know did, did they look like they had themselves together you know at home not just at work but financially physically health wise you know just what what did you see because what you saw is probably what you've inherited. So you're going to want to, again, give them grace, especially if they had that type of upbringing where they they were messy or they grew up in a very messy home and that just is what it is. You decided to bring them into your world. So now you need to work with them from a place of grace. You cannot change them. You are not their creator. 
that's not your place. You brought them into your world. So to a certain degree, you do have to accept the fact that they're a messy person, but you can, like I said, use those other strategies to find a way so that you guys can live peacefully under the same roof in a way that, you know, you can still maintain an environment that reflects how you feel inside, if that makes sense. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you did, please hit the like button. Please definitely subscribe if you want more of this. And of course, um, yeah, I will be coming to you guys with some more um, courses and little workshops later on to help. But for now, my biggest recommendation is that you simply check out the next video. Take care. Bye.